Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, let's dive right in, shall we? Our favorite troublemaking duo, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, are reportedly calling it quits. That's right, the fairy tale is over, and reality has come crashing down like a ton of bricks. Now, I've always been a huge fan of the royal family, Kate and William. Class acts, through and through, they represent everything that's great about the monarchy, grace, dignity, and a true sense of duty. But Meghan, oh boy, where do I even begin? From day one, something just felt off about her. Call it intuition, call it a sixth sense, but I could see right through that Hollywood smile. Here was a woman who thought she could waltz into one of the oldest institutions in the world and change it overnight. Talk about delusions of grandeur. And poor Harry, our once beloved prince, the cheeky ginger we all adored, reduced to nothing more than a puppet on Meghan's strings. It's been painful to watch, hasn't it? The way she's isolated him from his family, his friends, his entire support system. I mean, who does that? But now, finally, it seems like Harry's waking up from this nightmare. Reports are saying he wants to come back to the Uck to reconnect with his roots. And honestly, it's about time. The question is, will the royal family welcome him back with open arms after everything that's happened? Let's break this down, shall we? First off, the move to America. Remember how they sold it to us. A quest for privacy, a chance to live a normal life away from the prying eyes of the British press. What a load of hogwash that turned out to be. Instead of keeping a low profile, they've been plastered all over our screens, airing the royal family's dirty laundry for the whole world to see. That Oprah interview, pure character assassination, the way Meghan sat there, playing the victim, insinuating that the royal family was racist, it made my blood boil. And Harry, bless him, just nodding along like a good little lapdog. It was embarrassing, frankly. But here's the thing. I think deep down, Harry's always known this was a mistake. You can take the boy out of Britain, but you can't take Britain out of the boy. He grew up in palaces, for crying out loud. Did Meghan really think he'd be content living in a McMansion in California, doing yoga and drinking kale smoothies? Please. Now, let's talk about Meghan for a second. Oh, Meghan, 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 where do I even start? This woman has been playing the long game from day one. She saw Harry as her ticket to the big leagues, a chance to become a global superstar. And for a while there, it looked like her plan was working. But here's the thing about Meghan. She's always wanted more. More fame. More money. More influence. Nothing is ever enough for her. And now that she's squeezed every last drop of publicity out of her royal connection, she's ready to move on to the next big thing. I mean, come on signing divorce papers, and calling lawyers about her inheritance. It's like she's not even trying to hide her true colors anymore. This woman is about as subtle as a sledgehammer. And let's not forget about the kids in all of this mess. Poor little Archie and Lilibet, caught in the crossfire of their parents' drama. It breaks my heart to think about what they're going through. Will they grow up shuttling back and forth between the book and the us? Will they ever truly know their royal heritage? It's a mess, plain and simple. Now, I know some people out there will say I'm being too harsh on Meghan. They'll argue that she's been unfairly treated by the press, that she's a victim of racism and classism. And you know what? Maybe there's a grain of truth to that. The British tabloids can be brutal, no doubt about it. But here's the thing. Meghan knew exactly what she was getting into when she married Harry. The royal family isn't some quaint little social club you can join on a whim. It's an institution steeped in centuries of tradition and protocol. If you're not prepared to put duty first, to sacrifice your personal ambitions for the greater good of the monarchy, then you have no business being a part of it. And that's where Meghan fell short. She wanted all the perks of royal life, the titles, the mansion, the designer wardrobe, without any of the responsibilities that come with it, opening hospitals and shaking hands with the public. Beneath her, apparently, no, Meghan had bigger fish to fry. Netflix deals, Spotify podcasts, tell-all books, anything to keep the spotlight firmly on herself. But now, it looks like the party's over. Harry's finally seen the light, and he wants out. And can you blame him? The man's been through hell and back. Losing his mother at such a young age 
growing up in the public eye, and then falling under the spell of a woman who seems hell on destroying everything he once held dear. I've got to say, part of me feels sorry for Harry. He's made some colossal mistakes, no doubt about it. But at the end of the day, he's still Diana's boy. There's still that spark of the old Harry in there somewhere, buried beneath layers of California Wookieism and self-help jargon. The question is, can he find his way back? If he does return to the Yuck, what kind of reception will he get? The British public can be forgiving, but they got long memories too. Harry's going to have a lot of bridges to rebuild if he wants to regain his place in the royal fold. And what about William? The rift between the brothers has been one of the saddest aspects of this whole saga. They were once so close, united in their grief over Diana's death, supporting each other through thick and thin. To see them at odds like this, it's heartbreaking. But maybe, just maybe, Harry's return could be the first step towards healing that relationship. I can picture it now, the two princes, older and wiser, putting aside their differences for the sake of family and duty. Now that would be a story worth celebrating. Of course, all of this is assuming that Harry can actually extricate himself from Meghan's clutches. Make no mistake, folks, this woman is not going to go quietly into the night. She's invested too much time and energy into this grift to walk away empty-handed. We can expect a media blitz like no other. Tearful interviews, shocking revelations, maybe even another sit-down with Oprah. Meghan will pull out all the stops to paint herself as the wronged party, the innocent victim of a cold and uncaring royal family. And you know what? Some people will buy it. There will always be those who see Meghan as some kind of feminist icon, bravely standing up to the stuffy old British establishment. But those of us who've been paying attention, we know better. We've seen how she treated her own family, cutting off her father and sister without a second thought. We've heard the stories from former staff members, painting a picture of a demanding diva who threw tantrums when she didn't get her way. And we've watched as she systematically isolated Harry from everyone and everything he once held dear. No, Meghan Markle is no victim. She's a master manipulator, a social climber of the highest order. And now that her grand plan has fallen apart, she'll do whatever it takes to save face and come out on top. But here's the thing. The tide is turning. People are starting to see through the act. The Sussex's popularity has been on a downward spiral for months now, and this divorce could be the final nail in the coffin of their carefully crafted image. And you know what? Good riddance, I say. The royal family is so much better off without all this drama and negativity. Kate and William have been absolute rocks throughout this whole ordeal, continuing to serve the public with grace and dignity. They're the future of the monarchy, and thank goodness for that. As for Harry, well, I'm rooting for him. I really am. I hope he finds his way back home, back to his family and his roots. It won't be easy, and there will be a lot of hurt feelings to overcome. But if there's one thing the royals know how to do, it's putting on a brave face and carrying on. In the end, this whole saga feels like a cautionary tale, doesn't it? A reminder that fairy tales don't always have happy endings, that sometimes the prince doesn't ride off into the sunset with his princess. Real life is messier, more complicated. But you know what? Maybe that's not such a bad thing. Maybe Harry needed to go through all of this to appreciate what he had, to understand the true value of family and duty and tradition. Sometimes you have to lose something to realize how much it really meant to you. So what's next for the artist formerly known as Prince Harry? Only time will tell. But I, for one, will be watching with bated breath. Will he return to the book and throw himself on his family's mercy? Will he try to forge a new path for himself, freed from both Meghan's influence and the constraints of royal life? Or will he somehow find a way to balance both worlds? Whatever happens, you can bet it'll be dramatic. The Meghan and Harry show has been many things, but boring isn't one of them. So buckle up, folks. Something tells me we're in for a wild ride. And to Harry, if you're listening, and let's face it, he's probably not, but a girl can dream. Here's my message to you. Come home, Harry. Come back to where you belong. Your family misses you. Your country misses you. And gosh darn it, we miss the old you. The you that made us laugh, that made us proud, that represented the very best of what the royal family could be. It's not too late to turn this ship around. You've made mistakes, sure, but who hasn't? The important thing is that you've realized it. Now it's time to do something about it. 
Ditch the Hollywood lifestyle, the Fox philanthropy, the word salad podcast. Come back to rainy old England, to garden parties and polo matches, and all the wonderfully mundane duties of a working royal. It might not be glamorous, but it's real. It's substantive. It's you. And to Megan. Well, I'd say good riddance, but I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of her yet. Hollywood better brace itself. Something tells me she's got her sights set on bigger things than a prince now. An Oscar, perhaps, or dare I say it, the White House. God help us all if that ever comes to pass. But you know what? Let her go. Let her chase her dreams of stardom and influence. The royal family will still be here, doing what they've always done, serving the people, upholding tradition, providing that comforting sense of continuity in an ever-changing world. So there you have it, folks. The end of an era, the closing of a chapter, but in every ending, there's a new beginning. And call me an optimist, but I've got a feeling that the best is yet to come for our royal family. Keep calm and carry on, as they say. The monarchy has weathered worse storms than Hurricane Meghan. It'll survive this one too, and maybe, just maybe, come out stronger on the other side. What do you think? Are you Team Harry or Team Meghan? Or are you like me, firmly on Team Royal Family? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more royal tea and hot takes. So what do you guys think about this news? Please share your thought, and let me know what you think. Until then folks thanks for watching, we'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.